y'all lucian black here with into the chasm and i got my new friend lachelle up in here hi um she runs a local hair salon called hotheads hotheads in marion and she just opened a location in mclanesboro bought it bought oh it. Yeah. bought an already standing one in mclanesboro natalie josephs hell yeah again congrats on that congrats on that she's gonna come up in here and we go talk some interesting salon stories the ugly side of beauty that's exactly what i want to hear the right. ugly side of beauty that's that's what we need the the darker cosmetology <laughs> the cosmology from the top to the bottom the cosmo <clears throat> cosmology of cosmetology that's a tongue twister so uh where are you from michelle oh i grew up mostly in cobden cobden okay yeah before so local. that kind of a railroaders kid so whatever. yeah but cobden before that was the fairview heights area oh, okay and i used to live in the heights yeah. myself yeah and then Chicago in the Windy Village. Okay. Oh, how'd you like Chicago? No, Chicobden. Oh, Chicago. Okay, Windy you just called that. Okay, okay, yes. okay. <laughs> yeah. Pun, gotcha. Yes. Okay, so uh, what got you into like hair and everything? Oh, you, did God. you just always know it yeah. would be hair? It was good, yes, because, well, I like to paint and draw and sculpt, and I was always yeah. doing stuff like that. And then I started watching movies at a young age, yeah. and things just blew me away, how they could take a person and make them look different with yeah. makeup and special effects. Yeah. And, and there was a couple of really... So it's the artsy side of it, yes, really. Yes, yes. And just turning someone into something different. You don't have yeah. to wait for Halloween. You, know, yeah. you can do that all the time. And the first movie was the Ray Harryhausen stop motion photography, Clash of the Titans. Oh, the yeah. Original. Yeah. That blew me away. Yeah. That blew me away. I thought it was real. And then after that, I said, okay, whatever. It's movies. Uh, American Werewolf in London. Oh, that's a... Took, that's a Took me to a whole new level. American Werewolf in London. When did that come out? like 81 i think yeah i think i was negative eight 79 80 80 it was yeah i was a little but i think i was a couple years after i probably caught it at an old movie house or something yeah and um but just the special effects from the gore and then the the way it it just blew me away i was like that's what i'm doing i'm I'm gonna make people look different that's cool so that's the that's your origin story is really just kind of movies movies huh yeah that's interesting because like as a person that i don't know much about cosmetology or hair or anything I always just assumed it was just the fact that it was just hair. People like hair, but for you, it's more of just yeah. like the artsy creative yep. of it. Yep. Um, that's interesting. And that's part of kind of what a, we could talk about. The yeah. difference what people think. Oh, I am totally, do. to, totally and, down with you that. You know, stuff like that, because like that's, yeah. A lot of people the are like, oh, don't you know how to cut hair? I'm like. <laughs> it's deeper. It's deeper, <laughs> motherfucker. <Right. laughs> like, don't you? Like, I mean, <laughs> what does that even mean? Uh huh. Yeah. Um, I guess with this this podcast, I kind of, I like the idea of just highlighting local people. Thank you. Um, I was watching Mystery Science Theater like oh, a couple months ago. I used to watch that ago, too all the time. And I was talking to my buddy George. I was like, dude, we could, because you know when you're like with your best friend or your homie or something, just the, the golden material that comes out of you both and just your inner, inside jokes. Uh, we did, we streamed The Birds, uh, oh, The yeah. Hitchcock. Yeah. And it was funny as hell. And that made me scared of birds. That movie did. That movie was I'm pretty still messed up. I'm still scared of birds. It's just they're fast and flappy. and. Oh, so you don't like bats either then? No, bats don't bother me. What? But birds do. That don't make no sand uh, dance. Well, bats are small. Have you ever seen yeah. one? Oh, yeah. they are baby. Like, there's nothing to they're, them. They're very yeah. tiny. Yeah, those birds are they're scary. So, um, so, so was it always hair or did you have other hobbies or anything before you got into hair? Artwork, just painting. Okay, so drawing. it's just always art it's creative. It's always that's something. been that's yep. been the bread yep. and butter right there. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I used to paint jean jackets and jeans for people back in the eighties. Oh, that's crafty. That okay. Shit's all back now. I wish I could oh, have yeah. held on to that stuff. Oh, oh man, people are buying up old uh, yeah. uh, Kodak cameras and everything. Got the Kodak camera. Yeah. Yes. Hi, kitty. Hold on, my my kitty. Yeah, it's uh, just painting and drawing. I mean, anything. I was just want to be left alone. You know, too growing up, just like leave me alone. Kind of lose crayons. yourself in your creativity. Found some crayons. Got That's some cool. So you carved your own niche out of your own thing. Yep. So you were always. Yep. Um, so was, uh, was Hotheads, was it your first location? It's just been open for That's my first ever opened my own place. No kidding. And it's still going strong. When did it open? 19 years. That's awesome. Yep. And, uh, so before that I ran other hair salons in the corporate 
world. Yeah, boring. Oh, sell your soul to the devil. That's what oh, that I'm is. sure. And then before that, just working. So but I, I had mm. a lot of experience under my belt before I decided that I'm going to open my own. Because it's tough. Yeah. What were some jobs you did before you really went fully into hair? Hair. Or was or were you just always working salons prior? Well, you, you got to go to school first. Yeah. And so that was a full year of your life. And so that was when I was 18 on. But before that, it was typical you know, restaurant gigs here and there, yeah, uh, high yeah. school jobs, babysitting, sure, painting clothes for people, painting their shoes, and all. Yeah, it's all back, man. I wish I could have kept on to that stuff. Yeah, it's, it's all the rage. I mean, the internet and TikTok, especially, people are like, a lot of younger people are ter- taking everything from the '80s and '90s. And, Stranger Things did that. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. They retro Period. retroized everything. <clears throat> Yeah, they, they that was it. Like oh, two weeks after that first season hit Netflix, I literally went to the store. I was like, "What in the?" Hell? Oh yeah, Metallica exploded. <laughs> well, well <laughs> Dungeons and Dragons yes, as well. Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, so all that you know, that's cool. What we went through, and I love uh, Stranger Things because those kids in that first season were like thirteen. Yeah, nineteen eighty three. Yeah. I was 13 in 1983. I was oh, 19, weird. So, so nostalgia. That was literally every year how they went through that. I was like, so it's like I, looking through Illinois, a vortex. They're in Indiana. So it even looked the same. <laughs> oh, mama. <laughs> so it was, yeah, it's really cool to be able to say, God, we had that. I had that. Cl- oh, my God. I had those shirts. I, I love shoes. Stranger Things because it's like the Goonies as a TV show. It's Cat. perfect. It's a perfect show. Yeah, literally, I would say it is, it is a perfectly done crafted yeah, show because everybody loves it. Yeah, I've never got, met anyone that didn't like it's it. It's got mystery and it's got it's got love. It's got friendship. It's got drama. The good guys the and the bad guys. Yeah. And oh yeah. And then it, the sci-fi element and then the horror. Dude, it's it's it such. I like it's a well-rounded show because uh, it's got so much going on. So about the hair salon. So what what are some of your favorite things that you've encountered really about the 19 years you've run a salon? What are like some of the favorite things you like about just running a salon or your customers or your 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 staff well <clears throat> or things again, you look forward to different I guess. places i worked before yeah. and then running 11 yeah for a corporate place three different states um all i knew is when i ready to open mine i was going to make it every single thing that i've not experienced in mm-hmm. these other places yeah and, and reverse because it was ugh, hateful yeah Cunty, toxic yeah toxic just it's nasty. Not looking forward to work, yeah. Yeah, you don't want to go in, and you stare at the clock. Oh, my God. I, and now I want it to be like, Hotheads mm. is my playground. Yeah. Literally, it's my playground. Yeah. I Your love sandbox. being there. That's love awesome. It. I mean, every, every client, you know, we, I wait I wait for them to tell me thank you yeah. first. Yeah. You know what I mean? Instead of me like, thank you for your money. That's yeah. how most places are. Yeah. Thank you. Please come again. I'm like, and they're like, oh, my God, thank you. And I'm like, ah, oh, thank you. Yeah, that's you know what I'm what talking mean? about. Like, yes, Reciprocation yes, right there. Beautiful. I want that. And they, I want everybody to have fun there. Yeah. It's not a spa. We do spa services, but um, it's not. I like the music up. We got Music's always going. Yeah, you got an element in there. Yeah. You got, you got a, and, uh, the tiles that you have yep. at the ceiling. That is the most unique thing I've ever seen. So uh, a that, lot of the tiles on the ceiling, she's got people that make, they'll sign something or write something on there. There's some really good art up there. Yeah. We've got some good artists that have worked yeah, on the Yeah, you took that up. from the, the they're, old they're school Marion location, mine, right? Yeah, I just replaced them with cheap or whatever. Yeah. Ones. That's such, I, I don't think I've ever seen that. I don't well, think it started cool. off with a, a shampoo bowl because we're going to get real fun here. Some of yeah. Your, some, of your, some of your listeners are going to get interested in it. Or grossed out. Very good. <laughs> First few shampoos have somebody lay in there, and there's nothing to look at. You yeah. Know? And I was like, one time I was getting my hair washed. And I was like, oh my god, I remember. The first time I ever went to a gynecologist. Yeah. The, as soon as she went to lay back, there was a Garfield poster on this ceiling that just said, "Just hang in there." It was that one, yeah. you know, or it was like or something. Yeah. And I remember laughing, and I yeah. thought. We need to put something up there. A little extra juju so, to the right. experience. Yeah. Like, yeah. So that started with one. And I think it I think the very first one was just like I don't even remember what it was, but it was something silly and funny. And then after that it took off, man. We yeah. Ha- I'd have kids hanging out in the, the shop during spring break, just all over the floor decorating. That's so tiles. cool. Yeah. That's cool as hell. Well, Art. Yeah, man. Yeah, extent. That's that's such a uh a call out to your creativity. Just the, the smallest thing nobody would think about. Um, also, why I painted most of my ceiling yeah. black. <laughs> right. That's more so because I like it's easier to relax under right. darker places for me. Too much light and mental stimulation in my brain gets 
cranky. But yeah, so as far as that question, the best thing about my shop having, you know, what it is, is I feel really good when I'm in there. Like, yeah. I don't dread walking in and I don't dread leaving. Yeah. Cause, and it's all about the people. Yeah. You've crafted your own atmosphere. It's your own Oh, yeah. It's your definitely own place. like we, you have the groupies and you have, you know, loiterers that hang yeah. out there. And that's fine. I mean, they yeah. want to hang out. Yeah, you're down for it. Um, all right, so let's get into some freaking tea. Let's get into some fun, okay. weird salon stories. Throw them at me. What's a, mm. what's a weird one? Do you want me to go way back in the day or something more? Mm, let's start back in the day. Sure, yeah. Go to the origin. Because it progressively gets worse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. That's what I'm talking. Uh, because a long time ago, doing hair. Now, this isn't just a hotheads. This is early. We're talking yeah. like 89, 90, whatever. Yeah. There was things that were just so crazy people are fucking crazy people are crazy they're nuts yeah now, it's not all of them again my the best thing about hotheads is my clients and my people mm. the worst thing about doing hair are clients and people yeah now it's this much it's like the one percent you know? yeah it's, it's not, very small it's not the majority right. we don't yeah. get the karens like yeah. most places because we don't let them we don't put up with it yeah we just we're not going to allow Well, you're the owner. You can tell them to fuck off. Absolutely. So. The minute there's, don't a, need little, your money. Get minute there's a little red flag, we go, ooh. Yeah, so, do you have Pasco? Gosh, we're not going to be able to do your hair today. Bye. <laughs> What's the point? Like, I'm not yeah. gonna, Why would you want to go down the road of hateful, yeah. shitty person? What I've always hated places that are so desperate for, for clientele that they don't have standards, where the customer is always right. I'm like... The customer's not right. They're I have not a license right. yeah. on the wall where I have a license that says I'm right. Yeah. Now. Yeah. <laughs> like, Bitch, I know some shit. <laughs> I've been there, done yeah. that, done some shit. So and and so back in the day, let's uh, just let's just talk about your typical God ticked off client. They didn't yeah. get what, they didn't get what they want. Yeah. Oh God. Well, before internet, mm, mm. you had books and magazines. Yeah. People had to look through things. Yeah. <gasps> I like that. That was a picture. Like, they weren't doctoring up those pictures back then. These yeah. were, like, pictures. So you could see everything in it. And they'd be like, okay, great, whatever. And so we would do our best yeah. to put that cut or that style or that color on that client's head. Yeah, sure. 99.9% .9 of the time, they love it. Now, also, early on in your career, you're not as good at doing hair. It's like any other Practice, yeah. job or it's any, any other craft. Like... You know, the first, like, musicians. Yeah, you don't just pick they, up the guitar absolutely. and just master it immediately. You, there's, it, you have to obsess to you get better. You have to learn. And then you got to buy new tools. New yeah. Guitars. Like, yeah. you're not going to... Nobody's on tour right now selling out stadiums using a Walmart guitar. Yeah. You know what I mean? True. Like, you got to, you know, you so you progress. So, yeah, early on, you've got to learn some things. Yeah. And sadly, the culture of this industry is hairdressers, mm -hmm. most part, don't want to share their knowledge. Oh, tips and little craft parts. They just, they'd like to see you fail. Yeah, so there's some catty stuff oh, about it. Oh, it's the worst. Yeah. It's it's one of the worst. It, no, it's it's the worst. You think that's the Yeah. It's the worst. So, because everybody's dealing with ego. Like yeah. the whole salon, or the whole hair barbering, beauty, anything that has to do with makeup, hair, fa all that fashion, it's all ego. The mm. clients have an ego. They want to yeah. look great. They want to look better than everybody else. They want to look better than their husband's ex-wife. Mm -hmm. They want to look better than their new girlfriend's ex-boyfriend. Like, yeah. They want to go to work being like, mm, that's an ego. It's all the ultimate it's comparison. Ego. Yeah, We're all in it. Now, the hairdressers, we got an ego, too. Yeah. Man, we want to be the best. We want to make the most money. Yeah. We want the huge clientele. Mm. We want, you know, it's all ego-based. Yeah. But there's a fine line between, like, where that ego needs to stop. And find balance. And where you need to, you know, stop being such a fucking twat. Yeah. And that was my early experiences. Nobody mm -hmm. wanted to teach me anything. I get out of beauty school. Everybody thinks you go to school and you learn how to do hair. Yeah. You don't learn how to do hair in beauty school. Really? You learn about hair. Okay, on so a, most of it's on on on, on 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 job on site training you is got the real to, right. You, you learn really everything learn about it. with a mannequin. Yeah. And these mannequin heads are all the same. They're mm -hmm. the same shape. They're the same size. All of the hair is the same hair. Mm -hmm. Every hair grows out just like a baby doll. There's no cowlicks. There's no soft So spots, it's all the no same whirl. texture. That's, yes. Okay. And then you learn like this is the haircut. 
45 degree angle. This is 90. So there's a lot of flaws in it, actually. And then when it's yeah. cut, you've cut like perfect straight lines on a perfectly shaped head. Yeah. That haircut will not translate onto everyone's head. Not on my head. I got three. I have three <laughs> right. calyx here, here, right. here. So you got to learn how to do things. And so, yeah, you're going to mess up a little bit of stuff. Yeah. But the problem is, is if you mess up, that's not the problem. The pro the, you you got to learn how to like, fix it. Like, yeah. what do I need to do here? Like, keep cutting it. Improvisation it right. a little bit. Yeah. Yes, you got to keep touching it and feeling it and blowing it dry and, and look, you know. And so my first year after school, man, I, wasn't, I wasn't doing good hair. Yeah. But I knew I wanted to, so yeah. I kept pushing it. Yeah. And then nobody would help you. They like they laugh at you. Yeah. Oh, you're a new stylist. Yeah. You're green. You're a freshman. In a lot of industries, that's newbie. that's how a lot of people it's are. It's awful. So I just had to learn on my own. Literally, yeah. I just kind of I consider myself a self-taught hairdresser. Yeah. I know that sounds crazy. Yeah. Well, and that was before YouTube and shit too. Absolutely. <laughs> So yeah, it's and I still watch trial and fire. Videos. Yeah, as you should. Why I love not? Them. Free I love information because that's where you can get those tips that yes. you needed when you were younger. But again, I know it's not going to translate on the same head. Every True. Single time. So people don't understand how hard it is to actually cut hair. Yeah. People just think you learned how to do haircuts in school. Yeah. And it's, I mean, you just look at pictures of everybody mm. you encounter like that every single head is different yeah and you gotta learn how to do every single haircut on every single head mm -hmm. with multiple types of hair textures and then mm. a year later it all changes they got a new styles oh i didn't and yeah the there are trends and stuff so you have yes. to learn new trends and, and if you're is, not on the trends they're not gonna yes. you're not, you're not gonna get yes. as many customers Yes, and so with oh, the shit, meanest about that. customers would get so pissed. Yeah. They would throw fits. I mean, I've seen them. I've had them double up their fists. Yeah. Literally like they're going to beat my ass in front of somebody. Oh, uh, people are crazy. And it wasn't even me sometimes that did the, you know, whatever they weren't happy with. It's just me like standing there. I'm like, listen, you know, you know, I'll, I stick up for people. Yeah. You know? I, especially my staff. They're, I'm always going to back my staff before any. Karen. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Especially if I know they didn't do anything wrong. You know sure. what I mean? And that causes... Corporations <laughs> do not do that. <laughs> yeah, just, oh, here's your money back and here's a gift certificate. Yep. And, and then they're validated for being an asshole. Mm -hmm. So now guess what? They're not going to change. They're not going to change. Yep. But you got, I mean, that's, that's the, that's the nasty part of clients. Now, mm -hmm. again, you don't get very many of them. Yeah. They I are don't. not the populace. We don't, especially. Because yeah. I'm just... Standards. Set our standards. Yeah. Standards. Yep. Hell yeah. And I try to train everybody. Is you know that's a big thing for me too because again, I didn't get help. Yeah. I had to push through that shit and to run through hell, and then now I'm like I got my own shop. Even before that, when I was corporate management, yeah, I made sure everybody was trained. You know, I would hang out in all those salons and like watch what they're doing, and then say, hey, let me show you something. Yeah. Hey, I mean, jump in, critique, help out, right? Adjust for two reasons. One, that stylist wants to learn needs to learn and the hair client doesn't want to walk out of here with a shit haircut yeah yeah like that's part of my the job description yeah that's your too, niche yeah, yeah to make sure that these people are at least we're trying our best to do it do what we need to do for them yeah hell yeah well that's respectable man because there's there's so many it, the service industry itself is full of so many people in the wrong positions and and especially with corporations is because you get stuck behind the fine behind behind the tape of, of what you're supposed to do, which prevents you from what you need to do, right. which is actually hold your customers accountable. You can't talk to your staff that way. And even worse, when like your, your managers talk to your staff that right. way, you know, I would never talk to anybody that works yeah. for me like that. And yeah. so I'm not going to let a customer do it too. Hell no. And what well, you just said something about the service industry. Yeah. I'm just glad you kind of brought that up because that is probably the top tier problem with our industry is mm -hmm. we're still considered a service industry. Yeah. And we're not. No. There's no. absolutely no, I don't serve you a haircut like a beer. Yeah. Now, there are hairdressers. I've worked with some. Yeah. And I know them out there. They've do the same kind of haircuts yeah they don't really do anything different yeah kind of just get huh. exactly what you're looking for that's it done that's it you're done rinse and repeat but then you've got 
the other parts of us, which are like me yeah. and other ones that I know, that's like, it's a creative industry, period. Mm-hmm. It's creative. Yeah. Because I've tried to teach people things. Like, I've got, I'd say out of 10 hairdressers that I've worked around, two out of those 10 mm-hmm. have this. Have like the zone. Where the... they go, oh my God. I can do this. Yeah. The most amazing, crazy colors and cuts and styles. Yeah. The other eight out of 10, they're like, they never get it. They don't connect the nope. same way. They're yeah. like, is that a 45 degree angle? Is that a 90? I don't fucking know. <laughs> it's little, watch what I'm doing. See how I did this? Now watch what I did. I went, whoo, like, see what I just did? And so, can you not see? And they're like, yeah. uh, uh. I'm like, can you not see? Like, just, <laughs> like, you know, so, so yeah, there's the majority of the greats. Yeah are artistic minds period end of discussion yeah well you got to have some creativity and imagination in there because you are in a creative sector yes. here like the most that's why hollywood but then has also been science huge. Yeah. We gotta, people think we're just dumbass musicians yeah you went to beauty school yeah do you know that i can pick out a couple of products in my shop and i could burn the whole hair salon down by mixing <laughs> them together y'all know that now you know that? You know who you I fucking mean, with? You know I who mean, you fucking with? It's, it's, <laughs> there's science. We had, I mean, there's yeah. a lot. And it, and again, they only taught us the basic stuff in school. So I had to get out and be like, why is this stuff doing? I want to imagine if, 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 if hair salons went away for like a month. Oh, they did during COVID. People, well, and people lost <laughs> yeah. their shit. Yes, they did. Where the fuck's going to do my hair? Like, <laughs> they were off it. Like, you're, you're essential. And Nancy like, Pelosi out there, maskless. <laughs> Oh, it wasn't even her. <laughs> it was no, it wasn't even the thing. It was uh, just like I, you know, that year was fucking crazy. It was bad. It was and, bad. It was not I, good. I'm, I'm of the weird part of the uh, people that I we needed a bigger shutdown. I think yeah, because you know other countries they shut down like there was tumbleweeds in the streets. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And here in our country, it was like oh we're doing a shutdown. Yeah, non-essential people need to batten down the time. And then I go out like. I always thought it was weird that we kept street, alcohol like, stores open, though. That was strange. Well, Liquor stores stayed con- open. Every store that could sell anything uh, that, that considered essential stayed open. I mean, it was things like, I was like, what the hell is going on here? Beer is essential. And then 13 weeks of the hairdressers and barbers and massage therapists and estheticians and nail techs that are shut down. So you guys were down for 13, 13 weeks? 13 weeks. Man, that's Illinois. a long time. Those numbers kept going up. What'd you do for 13 weeks during COVID? You want to know? What'd you do? Goddamn. What'd you do? Okay, first week. Because that must have been weird when you're used to working all the time. First week I went to the shop, uh-huh. turned music up super loud. Yep destroyed everything pulled everything off the walls patched holes did yeah. drywall patching repainted scrubbed the baseboards repainted as a whole week okay and so it's, they'll t- helped out a 10 hours a day yeah. i was in there all by myself yeah. phone ringing i'm not even answering i'm just like oh god you know staying on the week zone one yeah week two i did the same thing to my house okay okay but also my husband was literally about the only person making any money. Yeah. And one of my kids, he was still, he was, he was a barber school. So yeah. he was shut down from barber school, but he was working at Kroger part time. Yeah. So everybody else, I'm a hairdresser. Kids are hairdressers. Teenager, oh man. Yeah. So. College kid. Nobody's out of the house, man. So my husband's like, making the money's money. getting yes. chopped up now, real quick. I'm still paying my bills. Yeah. I still have rent at my hair, hair salon. Yeah. I still had electric water, trash insurance. I want to make enough. And so I'm like, well, Watch yep. my account go down. Whatever. Mm-hmm. And I'm applying for every single PPP thing there was. Yeah. Whatever. That was a whole nother mm, con. Con artist. Yeah. So, so week two, I'm doing everything. Now, we're skimping really. We skimped on everything that was a necessity at the house. Again, because we don't know. So mm-hmm. it's like one cup of coffee a day is all I'd have. Yeah. Because you didn't know how far right. it was going well, go, like go to go. Like the Western or some nothing shit. nothing on the shelves. Yeah. So, you know. Nothing to buy. That was weird. Yeah, yeah it that was. was weird. So, you know, I'm Couldn't no good. could get freaking Lysol. Right. So week two, that was that. Week three, I started refinishing furniture at my house. Yeah. That's productive. That's cool, By though. By week four, my husband would be walking in the house and be like, dude, what's that smell? I'm like, it's me. I haven't been off this couch all day. Ah. Like, seriously. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I'm just like, I spent three weeks doing so much thinking, oh, this is actually kind of cool. I'm getting yeah. stuff done. And by week four, I'm just like, fuck. Like five, like six, like seven. It just went on. Yeah. It was awful. 
I've never taken that much time off you know have a baby yeah that's crazy to even think about that COVID gave you the longest break you probably ever had from work yep which on one hand you're like this was awesome but eventually you're like okay it was awful. I need to go back to work it was awful yeah. yeah now a lot of places were still sneaking clients in I know that yeah but oh again, yeah I'm sure like, you know I'm I have a big X on me I always have yeah. people like to turn me in to the IDPFR again evil people that Sorry, something was crawling on my leg. And, you know, they come in and do their inspections on me, and they mm. never find nothing. As a matter of fact, they're always telling me how great everything looks. And oh, yeah. Like, you seem to got we, good standards. So we always get turned in for everything, so. What, you got some Karens that are that get pissed at you because you deny them? Most of them are hairstylists. What? Oh, yeah. Your own people? Yeah. Blasphemy. And I know who you are. Betrayal. I'm not, really, I'm not putting out names, but I already know who you are. She knows. Yeah, I know. Because they go bragging. They're stupid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. in hotheads. Well, guess what? Inspector man says my place was awesome. And I'm the only Z one snaps. that did this, 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 and this. And yeah, so whatever. Yeah, they're, people are awful. Yeah. Hairdressers are awful to each other. They really are. It's sad. That's so strange. I couldn't even. I Because I've not been in the industry, really. So I just, I guess I've never been. I guess I've never had as much emphasis on my own hair. So I haven't been much around. At like a bunch of different salons or places so i don't know too much about the community but i've the got a lot of hairdresser friends that say there's definitely a lot of catty stuff oh, that goes on mean. Yeah. yeah i mean i've been accused of being the biggest bitch in southern illinois and midwest mm. but i mean i was a manager for a, sorry a manager of hairstylist and then this area supervisor and i mean you're in charge of i was in charge of probably half a million i don't know Hell, I don't even remember the numbers. More millions. Mm -hmm. It was millions of dollars a year mm -hmm. I was in charge of. Yeah. And eleven managers and probably thirty hairdressers on that. So you know, I mean, you got to kind of watch what's happening. And, yeah, you got to be hyper vigilant on yeah, assessing yeah, situations but also, in the like, area. I was always, I was, you know, I try my best to help people. Like I want yeah. to teach you how to do better hair. Because yeah. if you do better hair, the clients are going to come back. And yeah, and that's money and back, reputation, baby. Money. And then if you're making money, this the business is a, it's a it's a win win. Yeah. But I also don't put up with shit from people either. Mm. I can't stand it. The catty. Yeah. Yeah, that shit drives me nuts because I don't want to hear it. I, I especially don't want to hear about, you know, what, what David did or what Becky did. So I'm just like, I don't care. Like, nope. talk about it here and now what you got going on here. Yep. That's just mean. And, you know, I don't know. It, 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 gets, it gets hateful. Some of the people are just – and, again, I hate even – Again, it's not all of them. Yeah, but it's just the the couple ones really do God, tamper the the awful. water. They do. You just hi. Juliet saying hello. Hi. Yeah, <laughs> she comes. She coming right in the middle. I'm, I have a cat. That She's I like, hello. Know. I am comic baby relief. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Like, look at my butthole, new guest. Just look at it. Tell there me it what is. I ate yesterday. She's tiny, but like chubby tiny. Yeah, she she she. She's a tiny baby, but she got the belly. Mm -hmm. She knows what we're doing, too. Yes, like, she, she goes does. right in front of the camera. She's like, yes, this is where the attention is. Let me walk right on through. So, uh, <laughs> as far as um, the salon, what are some... What, what is maybe one of the craziest things you've seen or experienced in a salon that you were comfortable saying? Okay. Um, <sighs> Crazy. Because I'm sure, because like you're around crazy personality, like yeah. you're around the eccentric, yes, the um, egocentric, the the creative creative people can be the most humble people and the most yeah. psychotic people. Yeah. So I've, you're around all of them. Yeah. Well, as far as things like, God, let's go back to some fun ones back in the mall. Master back in the mall. Guys. Wait, was that Carbonell? Yeah, Marion. I started in Marion, then I became their supervisor. That was a long time yeah, ago. 99 yeah, ninety nine to two thousand four ish or whatever. Yeah. Um. We would have, oh my gosh, well, they had security, you know, blah, blah, blah. And there was a couple times that, God, how could I, one of them in particular was, a guy came in with a couple of women. And yeah. He was getting all their hair done. Yeah. And he claimed to be a preacher, and he said he was here doing these, some kind of outdoor tent revival things. And he, so he was not local. Yeah. And so we get done with these women's hair, and he was just all over them about how he wanted everything to look. And I was sitting there like, man, it feels like a pimp to me. Yeah, that sounds mean? like a porn's about to get shot or <laughs> right. something. But he didn't look like a pimp, and they didn't look like, you know, 
typical girls. But, yeah. So I think he was just some sleazy, snazz, meh, preacher man. Huh. You know what I mean? And uh, He might have just been the bad side of preachers or something. He yeah. tried to ba- uh, write us a check. Which at that time we still took checks, and yeah. as soon as he handed the check, he took this bag, f- and they got their hair colored, cut, all this stuff. Had bags full of products. Yeah. And walked out the door, and I went to look at the check, and it was like a fake kids check. Or what? Something. It was like it looked like a something you'd get in the money machines, you know, like the Fisher Price. That means he's done it a lot. And I literally was like, what the heck? So I literally take off running. I yeah. get in at them call security. I take off running. I get out to the parking lot. First yeah. things first. Can't get my hair back. Yeah. But yeah. Give the, me that shit back. But all the products I can get. So I've got my hands on the If bag. it's a weave, you sure can. He starts chucking big, huge bottles of shampoo out at me out. What? Lot, trying to get me. What? <laughs> I swear to God. That was one of the first ones. That was one of the first So ones. this motherfucker stole basically all this shit, and then when he's about to get caught, he's just like, I'm going to kill you with shampoo? Yes, he was throwing shampoo at me, and I'm like dodging it. God, I like, wish cameras yeah, were just more normal so, back then. Yes, it was so much. It was so funny. Um, and then, of course, he gets arrested, and all kinds of hell breaks loose, but... So that was a biggie. Have that, you seen that, this guy since? No, we're talking 1999. Okay, yeah, like, he's probably long gone. Right, yeah. right. Um, yeah. But the mall would bring through all kinds of crazy people. It would yeah. bring through the weird, horrible ones. We'd also bring through really cool people. Yeah, like, contrast. Um, it was Christmas time one year. I mean, we're slammed. We're just it was a busy shop. And it was walk-ins only. You had to come in, sign your name, and they would float around. And they go down to Ruby Tuesdays, and we were oh, really, I miss yes, Ruby yes, so we much. Were, we had them on their speed wings dial, were so good, right? So they'd be like, "We're gonna go down to Ruby Tuesdays." Like, all right, we'll call. For, you know, we call and say, "Hey, tell Scott, John, and Kim, you mm-hmm. know, whatever, to head on down soon." Okay. So this guy gets up there, and he's like, "I look up, and I'm like, wow, this is the most interesting man I've seen in a long time. Huge freaking cowboy hat." That was long dog mount. duster all the way to the floor. Oh, man. The big handlebar things, and he has spurs on his boots. Clean. What the hell? This dude is a whole ass vibe. Okay. Yes, yes. And I'm this, just like, man, man, a video game character. So anyway, I start noticing that there's some of the ching, stylists ching. are kind of like sweeping a little longer. Because he's next on the list. They're trying to figure out what's going on They're with his dude. sweeping a little yeah. longer. They're going to the bathroom. One's like, I think I'm good. I'm thinking, oh, God, they don't want to do his hair. Like, they don't want to mess with it. Oh, like, you know what I mean? Because like, he okay. looks so right out of the movie. Unique, yeah. Well, there's, who knows? Like, in Tim, I don't know. But he I'm looks more like, like a flag. Like, this may not be right. as simple as I and wanted so to be. so I'm like, damn, these girls, okay, these girls are intimidated or whatever. So I'm like, hey, Chuck. Chuck yeah. comes on back. I mean, clink, clink. I mean, chink, he's chink, crazy. Chink. Like, takes his hat off. Takes the duster off. I said, I'll, I'll hang that for you. And it was like, oh, it weighed 100 pounds. It was a full oh leather duster. Oh, my God, duster. yeah. He had the belt buckle. It was the craziest thing ever. <laughs> Sit, I put it hanging up, and I say, you know, so what are you doing? Oh, just go to clean it up. You blah, blah, blah. So I said, so are you a real cowboy? Yeah. He goes, no, ma'am. I'm a horse man. I don't ride cows. I ride horses. I said, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, my bad. He's from Montana, passing through. Oh, he's a Montana a boy. Of, okay. A bunch of horses he's taken to some show. I said, all right, cool. So I gave him a haircut. We're talking, you know. He gets ready to leave, gives me the money for his haircut, and then goes, five $100 bills for a tip. What the hell? And I went, no, sir. I'm sitting there going, what? He goes, yeah, you had some of the best conversation. Nice to meet you. If I'm ever back through, I'll come back here. I said, oh, my gosh, thank you. Merry Christmas. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, He walks off, clink. Clink, clink. Oh, I, I bet the girls were pissed. And I looked at those girls and I went, don't judge a book by its friggin' Damn, cowboy. drop the mic. Yeah, don't. And they were all like, what? I'm like, that's my money. Just because he looked yeah. whatever. Different. Like a freaking Different. cowboy. No, he's, yeah. he, he's clearly a character, you Absolutely. know? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So those are the kind of, those are the moments too that you just go, oh my God, this is the greatest job ever. This is, and not even just the fact How much was I, his haircut? At the time, probably nine ninety five. Oh my god! Yeah. The, what Master Cuts was nine ninety five, and then yeah. it looked eleven ninety. You know, it was always at ninety five. So it was ten eleven dollars for a haircut, and he gave me five hundred dollar tip at Christmas. What do I mean? What do I mean? Mm, I said you come back here any time. Any day of the week, Montana, man. Mr. Montana. Yep. So those are the good times. I've had really good tips from people. Before, yeah. But also, like, not just money tips. It's I've been doing this so long, and especially in this area. I've got the greatest clients. Yeah. I've got the greatest clients. Yeah. And I can literally call or text anybody and get 
something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Not like, I don't know. You have community. Oh my gosh. Like, hey, yeah. you might need a, you might know of a used, good used car. I got a college kid. Yeah. Literally a hundred people are sending me messages. Hey, I got a friend that's really looking for an apartment. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, who the hell can I go see a doctor? My yeah. tooth is out. Like I broke, you know. I said, yeah. So instead of having to go, it, it's and so that you know. You're plugged into the community. Man, that feels That's good. awesome. But yeah. I'm also, you know, I'll do people too like yeah. that. Like I don't expect it. Like I go in early, come stay late. I've been on Sundays. Mm-hmm. I've went to the funeral homes to mm-hmm. do their dead mom's hair and makeup. Because I, they only trusted me. Oh man! I mean, though, you know, so it's you know, you that's so, gotta be so unique. So whatever you put out there definitely comes. I've back. never thought about that. You've done deceased folks' hair. What is that? What is that like? Is that a mannequin? Are you do, do you do you separate from it, or oh, yeah. are you like sitting there? You're like, what's up, Becky? How you doing? Or are you just like, okay, no, I'm kind of just, just playing here. You just do it. That's so unique. Yeah. Yeah. But again, it's like those are the those are my people, and I'm their people. Like yeah. we are so close. I'm so close to my clients. Yeah. But you know, it's because it, I don't even like to call it clients, man. These are just these are my these are my people. Guests like, and I have friends. So many clients, and and especially like, let's go back to like 2000. Let's do 1999. Max sure. Cuts days. Y2K. How many years is that? I'm bad at math. Uh, 25. We're 25 years later, right? Yeah. There's kids. That I did their little baby's first haircut. Yeah. And their moms and their dads and the whole family, and they kept coming to me. Yeah. And then when I went here, they followed me. And then I opened up Hotheads, and they followed me. And I got 25-year-old people, 22, 23-year-old people that are bringing me their children's first haircut. That's so cool. Generational. With grandmas. Yeah. Great, great. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you got something going that's on. Cool. Yeah. That's like, so cool. That, it also makes you feel old. But yeah, that's, yeah. That's really You're cool. You're not going to get away from like, that. Man, I have been in a relationship with these human beings for a really long time. That's so cool. It is. Well, because people will be loyal to what you bring to, to them. Work. You know, yeah. That's why you go back every day. Yeah. Yeah. The, I mean, I could have made money doing all kinds of stuff. I didn't have to go into hair. Yeah. I actually got a decent IQ and did real good in school. Yeah. And that's another thing people will think, like, oh, you know, my kids are. <sighs> Okay, so God, we can just. Well, they think cosmetologists like, are dumb yes, just because they're doing hair. Yes, I'm sure that's a thing. Yes, well, people are so shallow, yes. man. Well, ego. Again, they think we're just having fun with, and it is fun. I want my. Yeah, it's a to blast. Yeah. Fun, but it's like. It's a profession too. It is. I put kids through college, man. Yeah. I mean, my non-essential job at COVID. Yeah. They still expected me to pay all my bills. Yeah, and this is putting food on the table for young absolutely. parents. Absolutely. You know, yeah, absolutely. Paying the bills, getting their goals, and like you said, taking them to college. Yeah, and I would say that's probably the most, if we could like pyramid it out, yeah. like all the different issues that are good and the bad and the yeah. ugly. The top one, and it filters down into everything, is we're just, we as hairdressers, in rural America, yeah, I don't just mean Southern Illinois. I mean rural America. Yeah, cities totally different atmosphere. But in rural America, hairdressers specifically mm-hmm. are not considered a, like a top tier job. That's crazy because they can right. retire. We're we're, we're, def- we're more we're yeah. almost in that like I've literally had people say, "How much do you think you should be making? Like, oh, how dude. much do you think you should be making?" Yeah. Like, how could you? Well, like, our, why me? Yeah. Like, why would you come after me? Well, I'm our whole environment's, like, economically dead. And I think we have small minds around it's, here. We have is, a lot of it those. Is. And, it, and it's not just, again, not just Southern Illinois. I'm yeah. not trying to pick on Southern Illinois. It's yeah. rural America. No, like, it's, yeah, it for sure. It is a smaller town mentality where it's yeah. like, you got no problems. The masses of people have no problems running over here to Walmart and uh-huh. spending their money and the big Pieces of shit, fat mm-hmm. fucking billionaires keep getting richer. That's why malls are dead. They yeah. got no problems with that. Yeah. But when I try to say, hey, you know, uh, it's going to be this much money to do your hair. They're like, what? What are yeah. you talking about? I'm like, well, first of all, it's going to take me three hours. Well, I yeah, and it's a profession. Do you think, I mean, I don't want to work for minimum wage. It's a, it's a, it's a skill. It's a craft. It's I a literal doing craft. I have 35 years. Yeah. You know, I deserve to. Like, again, it's not like... Go to Great Cliffs, motherfucker. Yeah, I don't don't even like to use the word deserve, but it's like... You do. Do you know how much lawn care specialists... And we're not talking about the guy guy that just maybe mows your lawn. We're talking about people that come in and sculpt your 
shrubbery. Yeah. They have designed out the most beautiful gardenscape. They're charging hundreds of dollars an hour. Oh, yeah. Hundreds of dollars. Yeah. Now, now, do they deserve that? Yes. Yeah. They gave you the most freaking best. You want the best lawn on the block? Yeah. You're calling someone that gets paid a lot. You want the best hair? You're going to have to pay for that. Yeah. It's not... I've never seen I've never like, seen that level between people's crafts where they think one craft deserves more credit than the other. Absolutely right. Because even right. when I go through a drive thru and I just get a burger, and someone's super nice at the front and they're and they're conversational, they repeat everything and they do like they just even if it's just a, a just whatever is a normal job, I don't even consider it that because I'm like this person is excelling at their job, they're yes. mastering their craft, they should make more money because yes. they're representing this business yes. greatly. And it's all about how you're making a human being feel. Yeah. And also the lasting things. Like, again, I consider our, I can, not just our, I consider my career, yeah. me, mm -hmm. an artistic human being. Yeah. Not everyone can do what an artistic hairdresser can do. Yeah, I'm Everybody sure. Everybody might be able to learn how to do a few basic haircuts. Yeah. Well, of course they can. Back in the, I mean, my dad used to cut my brother's hair. He wasn't yeah. a barber. Was it the greatest haircut? No. But mm -hmm. he kind of. They got a job and they can just kind of go through it. Yeah. yeah. You know, so you can kind of learn how to do some things. And so that's the difference between at home hair and high dollar hair. Because yeah. again, like. When you come to me and you like, hey girl, how's it going? Hey, I'm like, okay, I just need a tramp, man. My ends are fried. Not a problem. You want it shampooed? No, I'm in. I'm in a hurry. Cool. In and out. Give me twenty bucks, man. Cool. Yeah. Thanks. Have a good one. Yeah. You sit in my chair and you're like, I want this. And I'm like, all right, hold on. So let's see. Got to get you shampooed. Got to get you conditioned because mm -hmm. your hair is really frizzy right now and it's filthy. You've been to the gym maybe or what? Uh, ugh, yeah. You got to scrub it out two times. Yeah. You know, not just bleh. You got the desert in your two scalp. Times. Yeah. And then we got to put the conditioner in there. We got to let that sit. We got to run around. And of course, people want you. They don't want you to wash their hair like this. They. Yeah, they want a little massage in there. Right. Yeah. You got to get in there. I mean, that's part of it. Like, yeah. And so you get all that done, and you get them in the chair, and then you did it, and you put more product on for the detangling and the shine and the color protecting and the heat protecting. So you got now you got all these ingredients you put on their head. Yeah. Do you go buy a pizza and get no ingredients? Or do right. you go get a pizza with ingredients? Yeah. What's the difference in a cheese pizza and a pizza with every freaking thing on it? It's more. Yeah, price. Yeah. So now we're adding all these ingredients into their hair because they want it, they need it, whatever. Yeah. Then we do the cut. Section, cut, section, cut, section, cut. Spin them around. Measure, measure, cut, cut. Texturize. Now I'm going in there. You don't just cut a lot. And then you do all this stuff. And then you got to dry them. Yeah. That takes a while. Yeah, especially if they have really long hair. Yeah. And then you have to finish that haircut off after it's dry because it doesn't lay the same. Again, it's not. Mm. It, everybody's head is so different. So you got to recut it. And then you're like, oh, shh, shh. you got to like sculpt something. Give them the freaking trendy ass words, whatever the hell's trending right now on TikTok. Uh huh. At whatever. So you got to do all that. And then, do the, and then it's beautiful and they love it. Now, yeah. that's not a $20 haircut. No, because there's a lot of attention <laughs> right. to detail there and a lot right. of craft. And it craft. didn't yeah. take me 30, 20 or 30 minutes. It took a full hour. Yeah. But that's still like, well, they think, well, we should just charge them $20. Oh, but, you're psycho. Well, that's yeah, $20 you're psycho. an hour. People yeah. think that's a whole lot of money, but I'm not making $20 uh, an hour no. because money comes out of that $20. Payroll, taxes, insurance, rent. Yeah. I'd be getting two dollars out of a twenty dollar haircut for even just a skill that you have at least five to ten years worth of, of skills you should be making at least at baseline 25 to 30 bucks an hour Absolutely. in this economy take home 2020 yes. maybe 20 25 yes. but like yes. today this economy yes it's got to be 25 30 i would venture in some places take 35 home. 40 in bigger take cities home. yes uh because anyone thinking 20 dollars an hour is livable right now in anywhere yep. in the country yep. is that's slavery yep it is. It's it's actual like at this point when it, we're working and getting nothing, and people want you to make twenty dollars an hour, you're like, go fuck yourself. Right. Go somewhere else. This is well, a I this can is make a crap. Twenty dollars an hour. I yeah. can go right down here to the casino. I think they're yeah. hiring housekeepers <laughs> or some shit for yeah. twenty dollars an hour. Yeah. And you can put your headphones in. You have to listen to nothing. Yeah. But no, I'm not gonna make twenty dollars an hour. Yeah. I mean, I know that. I, but again, it's like. 
You've worked so long, you don't deserve, you deserve way more than $20 we, an hour. Well, I'm striving, yes, and I know it's, oh God, I hate the word deserve because. You do. But it, I know, but it's Work like, deserves effort my, yes, and recognition my and monetization. My experiences yeah. that I have and the, and I test out new products all the time and I'm. Buy, I mean, people have no idea. So you're trendy too. We got to. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm fifty. So you're, you're still plugged into it, and you're still keeping right. like a certain standard I'm with 50, the place. I'm getting ready to turn fifty four next month, and I can oh, okay. do hair better. If That's not right. Because I mean, I'm gonna be. I want to be that eighty year old woman. Yeah. That comes out. I know there, exactly what you and need. And I give them a freaking scene kid haircut with a Sweet. freaking raccoon tail. Two thousands emo. <laughs> yes, yes. I want to be able to be like, this is so cool, and people are yeah. like, this is cool. Um, but I mean, it takes a lot. For, and, and, and for clients, and it's not just clients, and again, i got to say this a thousand times, it's not the majority of them, it's just a very small amount, but that kind of mentality mm -hmm. of like, we're a hairdresser. Yeah. <laughs> Who do you think you are? Yeah. Goes to hairdressers too. Hairdressers feel that way. More yeah. of them than not in Southern Illinois, oh, sorry, so rural America, Yeah. have that attitude. They're like, oh, well, I just don't want charging people i'm scared i'm gonna make them mad and it's like you have to have a certain level of confidence first of all well it's self-respect man <laughs> for what you deserve well products cost a lot yeah. of money yeah and they don't get it like i guess the majority of people just assume we walk outside and pick color or bleach off a tree you just get it from dollar general is whatever everybody thinks and it's outrageous and it went up Everything went oh, up through COVID. Oh, I didn't even think COVID about that. And not, so it's even worse. It's, well, I can give Did you, everything double since COVID? I'll give you some actual numbers here. Prior to COVID, a, we'll just start with the cleaning supplies because we got to have cleaning supplies. Yeah. Um, half a gallon, uh, sorry, a liter, be a liter of the barbicide cleaning solution. Mm -hmm. Now it takes a couple capfuls. That's the stuff in the jars you see at the barbershops and yep. on blue stuff. Seventeen, eighteen dollars for that liter. Mm -hmm. You said prior COVID. When we reopened, because see the cosmetology supply stores were shut down through COVID too. They're not going to be open because they don't have yeah. any customers. So we're their only customer. Fifty bucks. What? And it had dust on it. It was the same fucking bottle before March that was sitting on that thing. They didn't get new That's ones in. That's fucking psychotic. They didn't get new ones in, and the company charged them a lot more. Is it still? Shit. Is it still? It's went down again, not to seventeen dollars. That's fucking insane, but man. But it's went down a little bit. And people still want the same prices as they got in COVID. Absolutely. And the same wages as well, uh, which makes gloves. no sense. We, were, I would buy our um, That's supply house, mm, and I got ooh, these supply house people are there just the supply companies with the hair industry are the most evil people too. They oh, all, I'm sure. It's corporate, corporate greed. Yeah. And it's, oh, so whatever. They could buy, you could buy a box of 100 gloves. Yeah. Um, those were usually mm, 5 to $6. But it was the Salon Tech brand or Salon, yeah, whatever. Salon. Just a brand, yeah. Yeah, 5 or 6 bucks, $25. Whoa. <laughs> so five fucking times more expensive. That's, that's insane. That's outrageous. And that's if you could find them. If you did find them, it's $25. That blows my mind because people still think that like we shouldn't even raise the minimum wage. Absolutely, I don't think when, anybody should get paid anything. Uh, huh? Nobody should get paid anything. Right? Get? You mean just get away from money? Yeah. Just well, no. They just think that everybody should just. Not oh, what be they paid. think? Oh, like, they're, well, they're uh, fucking. Yeah. What do you mean, eighteen dollars an hour? What? It's like dog. That should that should that's not even eighteen dollars <laughs> an hour right now would not be sufficient mm -hmm. because we're, everyone's so far down yep. because. Fuck it, something that was five dollars an hour or five dollars is now twenty. Imagine, and, and even that 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 the cleaning solution that from seventeen to fifty dollars an hour. That's insane because you've got products, yeah. you've got so much. You got to use a ton. And you of got shit payroll, on and then now the people that work for you are also under more pressure because they need more money. Yeah. And people want the same prices yes, as before or cheaper because they their bread went up, and so they yeah. think we should do them a cheaper hair color. That's crazy. And here's the thing. Hair hair is to me haircuts. Oh god. Hair I don't even know how to say it. It's it is a necessity mm -hmm. for people to want to look good. Yeah. It boosts their self-esteem. Self-confidence, yeah. Kids, men, women doesn't matter. But there's a difference in this haircut 
and this hair color and this one over here. Yeah. Um, and they don't, you know, and so when people will show us a picture, I'm like, oh gosh, okay. So first of all, I'm gonna have to bleach your whole head and the amount of thick hair you have, it's gonna be a full bucket of bleach, full mm. pound, full pound of bleach and at least a whole liter of developer. Yeah. That is 45 bucks right there. Oh my God. Maybe a lot more depending on which brand uh, of bleach. Let's say 50, let's just say 50 tax and shit. Yeah. It's gonna cost me fifty. So you're already making nothing. If you, oh my god! To just bleach this long, thick head of hair. Yeah. Now they want this rainbow colors. You've seen the pictures. Mm -hmm. They want this. Okay. Oh, you want a rainbow? A literal rainbow of hair color? Okay. Well, do you know that there's seven shades in the rainbow? <laughs> Red, orange, yellow, blue, green, violet. You know. I gotta get seven more tubes of color out. Yeah. Those tubes will run you. Ten to twelve dollars a tube. Oh man, so they're already up to a hundred bucks. You're already up yeah. to over a hundred dollars in just the. And you haven't product. even gotten to made made any profit yet. It's gonna take That's five nuts. to seven hours probably to do that hair color. My goodness. So what do you you tell me? We're at a hundred to hundred and fifty. It'll be more like one hundred twenty-five dollars. You're yeah. at one hundred and twenty-five dollars just to buy the stuff that goes product. on your head. Yeah. And then five or six hours of my time like what do you think and i've got bleach burns yeah i've run clothes you got different colors of skin on your arm i can't hardly do any other work because i'm on your head now for five or six straight hours yeah now what do you what do they think that like i'm like i'll need i mean i want 1500 bucks man yeah what like you're wanting a Ferrari hair, a Ferrari yeah. color, but you only got money for a Ford Festiva. Touche. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, touche, yeah. I mean, that's the best way to describe it. Yeah. I mean, and sadly, I've had to explain that to stylists. They're like, oh, well, she's just a really great client, and I love her, and I don't want her to get mad. I'm like, let her get she, mad. But you're going to. She's taking gonna, advantage right, of you. Right, you're not going to make anything after this. I know, but I, I'm like, hold on. First of all, it'd be different if you work for self-employed. Yeah. If you're self-employed, you want to do free hair all day long. But not most people work for somebody. Or yeah. Or just they have a, something that they're having to pay to, yeah. be, to be there. So, I mean, I've had girls like, I don't want to do this. I'm like, oh, my God. I said, but you're not making anything. And it's always a Saturday. And you're going to be. It's always a yeah. Saturday. That's the day. You're, that's our. That's half of our paycheck days. Yeah. A Saturday. So, you're going to give up a whole half a paycheck because this girl really wants rainbow hair. I think I that's normally get, a self-confidence thing yes. that some people just can't deal with confrontation. Right, and then they just, but then they, but then that's where I'm saying where I, I'm like, where I, these hairdressers, a lot of hairdressers, they don't even take their own job seriously. Yeah. Because I'm again, I'm again, I'll put out these scenarios for them. I'm all about just giving people little scenarios. Like, yeah. Let's picture you're a car salesman. Yeah. And you work over here at Mercedes Benz, and this little girl shows up. And she really wants a car. She's so nice, too. Oh, my God. She is so nice. She wants this car so bad. She wants this Mercedes. Oh, my God. Mm. But she only got $25,000 on her, and that's a $100,000 hair a car. Yeah. Do you think that Mercedes is going to sell her that? But I like her so much. But, but she's so nice. Let's just give her the car. Right. So it's like, so then what I do is I'm like, let's work with your budget. Yeah. Let's give you, well, how much money do you actually have on you today? Yeah. I have 150 bucks on me today. Right. I'm going to give you something freaking amazing. Might want to shave off four of those this. colors. Right. Yeah, right. Might want to shave a couple of colors off. Yeah. So we can, yeah. I can still. Compromise. Last. Yes. And that's, that's the best way to do business. But yeah. sadly, you know, I've had, you know, you just get. Compromise is uncomfortable for a lot of people. A lot of people really have a hard time having those uncomfortable conversations, which they're not even that uncomfortable once you get into them. Right. It's just the initiality of just being like, hey. We need to change what you want to do with your hair. You're not going to be able to afford this. Right. I'm just being honest here. Right. And I can't afford to do it. Yeah. Like, I <laughs> like I can't contribute $100 worth of products on your hair. Yeah. Because I actually purchased those. I know that sounds crazy. Again, they don't just come off a tree. <laughs> I actually had to buy them, and then here they are. It's like pizza places, and it's like it's like anything. Like, And it does get very frustrating. Again, for just a few people. Yeah. I want to keep saying yeah. this so that people don't think that I'm bitching about my clients yeah. and my staff. Because well, it's just you're talking about the Karens and the, the 1%. Yes, yes, yeah. You're yes, talking about those yes. ones that have that yes. God complex of, I want you to do five hours worth of work for Nothing. $20. Yep. And you're like, dude, you're psycho. Because even in uh, 
but pre 2020 20 dollars an hour was still way too low for anything yep and you're in an industry that everything is way more expensive our than hair, i knew our of. hair color we went from ordering i don't know let's say let's just do some crazy math let's say we do 200 tubes of hair color a month mm -hmm. because again you got to have all of the spectrum yeah it's not like because then have, you miss out on business right you have to have every so That's your like, ammunition let's just say 200 tubes a month we had to order and at one time our color prices well let's just go back go back to 1988 89 yeah 99 cents was about the going rate for either a tube or a bottle of color yeah at our cause at our stuff supply houses now yeah. we're their only customer too not not talking sally's where everybody can walk in we're talking yeah. professional line products yeah 99 cents now if you bought 12 of them you can probably get it for 80 cents a piece oh wow okay so bulk starts being a better option yeah sure and we would color people's hair root touch up type things 40 50 bucks yeah do the math yeah that's awesome for 40 or 50 bucks fast forward now a root touch up run you 80 in southern illinois oh wow that same tube's about 12 bucks oh man so that's cut wow jesus christ 12 so you can't even really get ahead and, and you, i mean you can but it's just a grind compared to yes, what it, it used is. to be then absolutely we may we i kept better money in my pocket in the late 80s or early yeah. 90s than i do now yeah now it's I more mean, way get, more budgeting you have to get real creative now yeah yeah, you have to shop around. Like I yeah. found places like I use. I have used Sam's pop up baked potato foils. Yeah, I buy in bulk and shit. Years, yeah, um, because I found them and I'm like, they, they were four, three or four dollars back then. You know. Yeah. Now they're up to a whole seven dollars for five hundred of them. Yeah. If you go to the supply house and you buy their foils for five hundred pop ups, they're about twenty twenty five dollars. Oh wow, so that's a difference. Okay. But hairdressers still go buy them. Because yeah. Because they can't, like. Articulate. Just why? Yeah. Why are you doing this? Like, well, I like these better. Well, learn to like these. Yeah. Better. You know what I mean? Like, there's ways to, you know, get. Yeah, I get creative. I bought reusable gloves. Re yeah. You know, I wash them. Money right there, dude. I am not throwing away gloves. Yeah. Right. I use disposable, obviously, for tattoo purposes and bloodborne pathogen things like that. But mm -hmm. regular, yeah. So I, I got creative. I'm like, I'm not paying for this anymore. Well, yeah, you get a hyper budget to save money, or you're gonna lose your fucking mind. Yeah. Uh, Unless you're in the city, because that's yeah. the thing too. People, um, hairdressers, and clients, our distributors, they treat us like we're just a one size fit all people. Yeah, and it's like okay, you're trying to tell me that I need to spend twelve dollars a tube on your hair color because that's what you've raked the price up. Yeah, thank you. My hair color. An average root touch up is going to be eighty bucks in Southern Illinois. That's just a root touch up, you know. That's yeah. not the fancy stuff. That's a cool, yeah. whatever. They're walking out fabulous. You go to Springfield, a root touch ups, it's a cat. You go just even up to Springfield, that same root touch up is going to be more like one fifty. Yeah, so I mean, you you're you're reaping Chicago, advantages of being down here right, as well. You're going to Chicago; those could be more like two hundred, three hundred. Oh, Chicago is expensive and everything. Now you got a city price for what you're getting done for hair, but guess what? They're still they're the same price as we are. So it's yeah. very, so people don't get that like the price that they're so they don't huge care. markup. Yeah, they don't care how much that tube of color costs. Yeah. Because they're making it's their money. pennies to them for a $300 yeah. hair color. Yeah. For us, it's like we're like cranking out those. Every little drip. To like, oh God. Savor. Be, yes, yes. Savor every yes. morsel. So like, I need more. How much? This much. <laughs> 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 like, the amount of money put on a toothbrush. Like, that much. Yeah. And so, oh, but, you know, it makes, kill me. but we have to. Because, yeah. you know, we are trying, A, trying to earn a living. Yeah, yeah. It is a passion for most. Most of us, it's not just a job. Yeah. Again, I could have, man, I could have done all kinds of cool stuff with you. Yeah, you got the I mind. You could have done a million love things. Love what I'm doing. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. But I also, I do, I do enough charity work. Yeah. I do a ton of it. Yeah. That when people try to yard sale me, mm -hmm. I just want to kick them right in the fucking face. Yeah, because you're you're paying karma, you know. You're, right. You're, you're doing it's the like work. I am doing homeless people's hair. Yeah. I've been doing it for the homeless shelter in Marion Lighthouse Shelter since before they opened. That's I so nice. So much money. I just I would do haircut a thons like every haircut today. Every single penny is going to help open up the homeless shelter. You know. And then oh, uh, good working. on you, dude. Why you're a philanthropist. Help. Yeah. Got to help. That's again, amazing. Again, not a lot of people help me. Yeah. I'd like to help people. Yeah. So 
we worked with them. Um, did a lot of stuff with the veterans back when Desert Storm and does all that stuff was still going yeah. on. A lot of veterans' wives, and so I had a lot of fun with them. We do some fun stuff with that. Sure. And then working with the Special Olympics prom. Oh, cool. We love them. We're doing these girls' hair and their makeup, and they're so happy. That's so nice. It's so nice, and so you know that's. I want to go out and help people. Yeah, as do. you should. That's beautiful. We do that. Good like, karma. We wanna, you know, you, because again, yes, getting your hair done yeah. makes you look better. And yeah, it'll change your life. You yeah. feel better. Yeah. If you feel better, you look better. And it's a hand in hand and hand in hand. And so they're out trying to find jobs, the homeless people. Mm-hmm. Um, they're helping them set up places to live. And we've worked with them since they've opened that place. I'm like, yeah, send them over. Send yeah. them over. Send them over. And it is, it feels good. Yeah. But then when somebody's in there going, why? Mm-hmm. Why not? Why won't you do this for me? And I'm yeah. like, because... Again, it's like, why would, do you, are you yard selling Walmart? Yeah. Are yeah. you literally going up there and being like, I want oh, these yeah. hot pockets are only I'm only gonna pay a dollar. Like, people just accept mega corporation mon- numbers, yes! but they only challenge their own people, yes, which right? is crazy to me because that's community. And we try, our, we have kept our prices at Hotheads down to the point. Yeah. Not, not all of it though. Again, yeah. well, you got to keep with the times, have, man. You, you can't hurt yourself the basic, too much. Basic, awesome, good. You're gonna get the best haircut we can possibly give you. Every yeah. one of us in there try damn hard to give you just a great haircut. We don't care if you're a little kid, old man, young woman, trans, yeah. gay, everybody. Everybody up in the club. Getting the best we can give you. And then, oh, yeah, sure, let's go ahead. Oh, blow dry. Yes. Because, again, like, to me, like, that makes everybody feel good. But when you show us things that's like, mm-hmm. that's like, seriously, like, you go to Walmart and you buy a cake. Yeah. And you think this place over here is going to give you a six-tier wedding cake for yeah. the same price as this you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you got you pay you pay for uh what you get, man. Right. And again, and you pay it, for your you, craft. Yes. It's the same thing. Well you've been doing it for thirty five years too. I mean this right. place is your establishment, right? We gotta do what we gotta this do. This is your place and you have to have your own boundary because you could be the nice person that's like, Okay, you you ask nicely. Let me make no profit on you. And then you do it again. Right. And then you do it again. Right. And right. again, and suddenly you're like, I've been doing this for two months, and I've right. helped all these people, and I have all this good karma, but I'm in debt. I'm in debt. Right. I'm broke. Right. My and bill's going down. The there's hair. no, there's right. no food in my fridge. Right. Like you have to have standards, and I know that's uncomfortable for a lot of the younger people. Is just you're like, I know I don't. I know that's a big price tag, and most people are probably gonna be a little. They're gonna feel that, but give them, give it to them. And say here you go. Right. Drop it down. And be like that's that's my boss getting paid. Right. And me getting we paid. We have to, yes. And I mean, and again, like I... You got to take care of your people. There's there's different tiers. Again, like there's different tiers of hair services, just like there are different tiers of restaurants. Yeah. You got your McDonald's. You got your O'Charlie's. You got your this. You got that. And then you got your Michelin star restaurants. Yeah. They're not the same. Yeah. It's food, but it ain't the same. Yeah. And it's that way with every single type of creative industry absolutely i mean a michelin star chef cannot walk in mcdonald's and get behind that yeah kitchen and make five star meals with the ingredients that are at mcdonald's well they even have titles for certain chefs they have to be like yes master chef blah <laughs> yes, blah blah yes because like, yes. if you don't say it it's like insulting a war yes. general because there's like yes did you just call me david motherfucker absolutely. it's master chef david you got it's it's you work into your what you what do you come into you you deserve the money that you put out there or the the bare bare minimum and I'm sure like you said you probably have at least humble prices to yes. what you could what you could swing you know we want everybody to and be you could be in there. you could you could choose to price gouge the fuck out of people Absolutely. because you have the reputation you could just do it if you wanted right. to but you don't right you know you're just like no we're we're, we're keeping it here right. I don't want to hurt their pocket too much, but I have to keep myself right. afloat it's, too. We want to keep these wonderful people. From it's got to be balanced back, but but with you and the customer. When you want something like priced. Yeah. Now we got to talk about that. We gotta, yeah. Let's sit down. This is going to be a car payment, girl. You better calm yes. down. Yes. Gotta... <laughs> More sometimes too. Yeah. Yeah. I got extensions. Yep. But you know, and then there's a TikTok and Instagram, Facebook, oh, they got social a lot media of new stuff things. coming out. 10 times worse for us. Oh, it's, it's going to get it's worse. It's hell on earth yeah. for, for people because they'll come they'll come in like, can I help? Can you watch this video? I'm like, 
Hold on a second. That, ha- I'm like, this is a 45 minute video. They're like, what? I want you to watch this video and cut my hair exactly like this. I'm like, you're gonna pay me to watch this video. <laughs> you're at first. And I'm like, Let's just fast forward to the end. Oh, I yeah. I know. We'll start That's hourly right, right now. Right. And, and then, then we'll get to product in 45 <laughs> right. minutes. And then it makes it harder. Like at least once a week, there's a person, and it's usually a younger person mm-hmm. in tears because we they can't get their hair to do what they want it to do. They're like, oh, I had just one the other day. She wanted blonde hair. Mm-hmm. We did a test round on it. But she had been coloring her own stuff. Why? Because everybody on TikTok's doing it. Uh, Go to Sally's, buy a bunch of crap, put it on your head. Blah, blah, blah. And then they come to us and are like, well. Can you fix it? Uh, sometimes we can't. Can't. <laughs> and we prove it to them. Like, we'll show them. We'll do a test here's strand. The colors, yeah. And then here's the hair. And I'm like, and then, boink, I just broke off about half your hair. <laughs> That's what would happen to your whole head. What? Well, they don't tell you that on Tiki Talkie. Yeah. Well, you got again, a bunch of amateur. Well, it, again, yeah. it, chemicals. Yeah, man. Like. Well, you can't fry your hair. You still have to have all the minerals and everything in there, and this the strength and dexterity of it. There's a there's yeah there's a cuticle layer, and once the cuticle layer falls off, it's no lo- different than your thumbnails. Hair and fingernails are the same, made up of the same. What was that material. keratin? Or keratin. Keratin. Yes. Yeah. And so when you break off your thumbnails and they f- literally fall off because of an injury, yeah. the whole thing has to regrow back. Yeah. That's the way the cuticle is in your hair. You can't fix it. Yeah. So the outer layer is gone. It's broke off, fallen mm. apart. Then you got the inside structure, which all these bonds are, it's cysteine, cysteine. Mm. And once you break those chemically, yep. they're done. But TikTok's got them convinced you can buy all these goodies over here and it will fix your hair. And they're spending all their money buying this bullshit. It ain't fixing bald. And you can't. <laughs> right. And then they think we are lying to and that's what that is another thing. I'm just like, Oh, oh wow, so Lord, there's a little psychosis honey, going honey, on in this. You're this girl's got hundred and fifty thousand followers and you're gonna believe her over me and I'm standing here right here trying to talk showing you. I'm literally uh, showing you what's what we can do to your hair. Well, that shows you the TikToks like the new Hollywood. It's awful. Because they, that, the hyper awareness of it is nuts because you can find all sorts of cool information on there, but you have to have the wherewithal to differentiate yep. between real yep. reality and this is just for clicks. This well, just and, wants your attention. In the beauty industry, I mean, everybody wants to be beautiful. Every yeah. Every girl in the world wants to be beautiful. Every oh, guy yeah. wants a cool haircut. Even the boys are coming in with these TikTok things and that's the strangest stuff. I'm just like, never that's a different time isn't it ever seen that they want perms and they want these weird looking oh there's a lot of young dudes with perms now in there and then they're like i've literally had them like can can you give me a haircut so my haircut's curly and i'm like can't really cut your hair curly yeah oh hold on let me show you and he'll show me these videos and i'm like son kiddo that's not what hair does well look this is before and after i'm like um it doesn't show it in real time though. It shows it stop and yeah. then it show, and comes back. So you really don't. They're think cheating, that he sir. Might have curled it with a curl. Well, he said he did, and I'm like, oh, God, you know. Oh, you young person. I mean, yeah, but it's you sad young heart. because that's what they see yeah. all day long, and they believe it, man. And so you got somebody like me, like, dude, I cannot. There's no such thing as cutting your hair curly. That doesn't make sense at all. <laughs> that doesn't because you have to heat it right that's the you have the bear curl it either chemically with yeah. hair or with a heated now it's, it's chemically that's a little more dangerous right because you're risking the hair follicle itself so kind of like a lighter heat setting would makes more sense for curling because there's so much misinformation out there and i yeah. get on my soapbox at least once a day with yeah somebody. Man, I'm just telling you, you need your own podcast. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you right now, you would have so much fun with this. I think it'd be. Fun. Um, I wish I had time. Oh yeah, Maybe yeah, we I got could that. Do this once a month yeah. or something. Hey, I'm down. I, I always like uh, making new friends and uh, having yeah. people on here. And hell, um, I've got enough microphones and stuff. Eventually, I'm gonna start mixing up um, podcasts. I'm gonna have people of different kind of backgrounds kind of jump on and just co-create something cool. That would be cool. Um, yeah, and I got a uh, a local musician coming on tonight, and then hopefully sometime the end of the weekend or by the week, week's end, blah, blah, blah. Um, his whole band, I'm h- hoping will come on. He's a, he's a, I don't know if he's a singer or the screamer, but he's in this local death core band, which I, dude, I haven't listened to death metal heavy stuff. Cause I was in a, a death metal band when I was like a teenager. I've kind of calmed down a lot since then. Death metal. What a great word. Yeah. Just murder <laughs> metal, Mur- murder, murderous, murderous steel music. Uh-huh. 
But yeah, I think it'd be cool. Yeah, we could have you fucking come back on and mix it up with maybe like a local Reiki master or something. Um, <laughs> not a Reiki master. <laughs> okay, no, no. I could. Uh, I I yeah. That's another thing that gets me. It's uh, the whole everybody is like oh, the, drinking uh, their damn moon water. Oh, uh, yeah. And rubbing crystals. And, I feel you. And I'm just kind of like. I've yeah. got a bunch of crystals, but they're. There's some weirdness to it because if people like you charging your crystals in the moonlight, I'm like, I'm trying not to be too facetious, but you have to understand if, if crystals were really charging and stuff in like frequencies, you think that you take a group of crystals together and they're charging together. But if you could actually strap a microphone to these crystals and actually heard the frequencies, it'd be like, you know, you know, because they're I'm, all different frequencies. They're not, right. well, they're not the I same mean, frequency. I don't dismiss anything, yeah. but I also like, I don't dismiss You're an equal skeptic. It. I just... I feel like, I don't know, people really are responsible for their yeah. own actions all the time. And I, I like 100%, it, yeah. I feel like people are responsible for their own actions. Oh, they fucking are. And then Even t- mentally, yeah. You know, We have, so, we have I, way I mean, more control I've, of our I've lives than we think. Somebody tried to give me a Reiki possession one time, and I literally just was like, what the fuck is that? Like, she's not doing anything. She's making weird sounds and breathing, and I was just like... <laughs> Not for me. She comes over, just puts her hands on your head. Yeah. Can I get a high? Yeah. <laughs> well, but I know people are like, oh, I love it. It works so good. And I'm thinking, well, that's. I think it's just the excuse to relax. Need, well, you have to be in the same brain. Yeah. Again, it's all about belief. It's yeah. about a belief system. And everybody believes what they want to believe. And that's, sure. that's a big thing for me. Yeah. But, I mean, I wouldn't have much to talk to people if they were reeky. I'd just be like, we're in different genres here. <laughs> right. I get a massage every three weeks, and he's yeah. great. And I want deep tissue. Mas- need... Massages are fucking crucial. If you're on your legs all day, yeah. and your shoulders yeah. and your arms are always moving and yeah. stuff, like you, you gotta, you gotta get massages. You gotta get that lymph moving right. around, or you will get stuff built up. But and... things with it has to do with like moon water. I'm like, isn't all water outside originally start? So wouldn't all water be moon water? Like, yeah, that's where all... it gets weird. Yeah, <laughs> all water is outside anyway first so i think it's all water i think i think a lot of this is just people playing but then they get lost in the sauce yes. of play yes i think you know they, what i mean right lost right. in the sauce too much spaghetti and then aren't crystals outside under the earth all the time yeah so just being outside on it wouldn't it? i don't know but again i'm trying to i know crystals it. are cool because they do carry information i know tesla was obsessed with crystals and thought they were conscious right um and who, who fucking knows but maybe they are yeah i'm too there, the there ain't nothing wrong with being be, objective or right, like skeptical. Can, right. I like being, I'm a kind of a skeptic person. Yeah. I'm somewhere in the middle that I, I, so I'm one of those people. I like to hear the opposite of what I believe and then also just have the conversation of, and I think the know, reason why I am skeptical is yeah. because I've never experienced anything. Oh, well, no, wait, there's you know some, what I'm saying? dude. So have so, you ever had like an out of body experience or anything? No, but I have, here's the thing. I was always skeptic about people uh-huh. with their ghost stories and everything. Yeah. Until I lived with one. Oh, shit. You know what? what? You know what I'm saying? You live with a ghost? Twice. Ghosty? Two different houses. Okay. One I saw all the time. One I never saw. Did it feel like it had good juju or bad? Always good. Okay. Always good. Yeah, there's nothing evil about it. Yeah. And again, so I'm like, is there really evil spirits? Can they really do all that? I don't know. I never experienced yeah. it. Yeah. But I you don't know until you know. Right. Yeah, so, that's a re- real so to shit. So believe somebody, I was always like, hmm, whatever, you know, because like, I never experienced it. So the whole thing with the uh-huh energy forces and stuff maybe yeah okay maybe it is maybe it works for some people maybe it's just yeah. me i'm just maybe, maybe yeah. my brain is not a whole different wavelength that i'm just like shut off to it but yeah the whole ghost thing was cool i got some video oh audio mostly you can hear what? you have going. to bring that shit over i, I am obsessed with that I stuff got it on my phone. no shit <laughs> yeah. i've got a i got a spirit box i'd be trying to hear some ghosties and but stuff one, the first ghost that I had lived in this old country house out in the country, and I would be at home alone a lot with the kids because my husband was gone to work. Yeah. Whatever, barge work or whatever. And I would see something like, you know, like there was like the glow of the living room. I would just see this all the time. Like, you know, and just something moving back and forth. And I was like, <laughs> so it just kept happening until yeah. one night I got up. And he, this old man was sitting in this chair with a, I'm talking straight up Afghan over his shoulders, glass. I remember I saw everything, but it didn't scare me. Like I didn't like a, yeah. like a person, like an intruder. I yeah. was just like, oh yeah, that's, that's a ghost. And I, I recognize like, something here. I just kind of put my head back over my, like, just like try to go back to sleep. And then I just like, oh, okay. 
I saw what I saw. But yeah. I never would talk about it because like, people think you're crazy or they yeah. might not. Until my brother was at my house and he stayed all night at my house. And uh, woke up the next morning and he, I go in the kitchen and he's sitting there early at the table. And I said, oh my God, you're up early. The coffee's going. Tell me about this old man that lives in your house. I what said, you saw fuck? him? Describe him to what a What the fuck? Yeah, so I was like, okay, there is a ghost here. Goes, I'm not losing my mind. Right, right. There's a ghosty. And so then after that, it became a little bit more fun. Like, people yeah. would come over and they'd be like, what is in your kitchen? Is well, he's not throwing fucking kitchen? darts at your right. head. So it's just right. like some dude in the corner just hanging out. But then the fast forward years later, the last, uh, my eight, my 19-year-old, he was about five. Yeah. And up till, well, up till he was even, I don't know. He'd stop talking about this girl in the house, but he would a little bitty thing talking about this girl won't leave him alone. She keeps sitting on his bed. She keeps staring at him. Described her to a T, and then about the and just kept on and kept on. And he would not did not like her. He wasn't he'd come and sneak into bed all the time with us. And we're like, God, go to bed. He goes, she won't leave me alone. And we're like, oh. so I never I really like saw that. anything. Yeah. But I heard her one time. Well, I was videotaping him. He was singing a song. I have it. It's crazy. And she's oh, if right, you want to play, you are she's more than right welcome. Here, clapping. Yeah, I'll get it. Hold on, let me get it. This That's is the weird. Cat, why are you freaking out? Because I'm here. She's so jittery. She acts like she's been like alone in the Sahara for fucking years. So, the backstory of this little song or this little video is he was little. Yeah, baby. Um, let's see here. Katie, what and you doing? He was. We were. Nobody was in our house. Nobody. Mm -hmm. And it was bright. It was, I mean, the lights are on, but nobody was in the house. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, I'm having issues with it. Let's see where No we're bus, at. you take your time. Come on, drink it. And he's like, I want to tell a, sing a song. And I said, okay. There's a theory that ghosts are uh, not what we think they are and that they could be like reflections of multiple realities. Okay. It's gone. Okay, hold on. So, we're literally just like this. Yeah. You're Jet, I'm here. We're on the couch, wall. Nobody's in the house, bright yeah. lights on. And so yeah. I'm videotaping him singing. Yeah. And then I'm feeling like there's something right here. But I. So your senses are detecting yes. and something. He's looking. He keeps looking over At the my same shoulder. spot? Yes. And then. He's clapping part of the song, and then she starts clapping. That's right weird. here. Mm. And I literally am just going. <laughs> I don't like that. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to. Uh, uh, no, thank you. So it takes a second. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Because that wasn't coming from him. No, and he's like this. He's I see, yeah, because he like responded. It's... You want to show it on the video? Yeah. Sure. That's weird, man. All you have to do is uh, well, and he's show it here. Okay. Oh, it's so creepy. But it, I'm literally like, I start giggling halfway through it because I'm literally like. This is holding, weird. Holding the phone going. I'm not going to look. Yeah. Man, I don't fucking like that it was shit. So weird. I don't like that it shit. What so the weird. fuck? It was so weird. Cause he, cause he, his eyes look over, then he looks back like, 
Yes, like he's mad. Or like he's like, it was, bitch, shut the fuck up. Like, I'm tired of shit. But he would say things all the time in the, at nighttime about this girl that would not leave him alone. And oh, she just looks weird. at me and I'm just like, Did oh. he ever, like, give, like, insinuate, like, an age? Like, was she older? Or, like, he just... said she looked like a teenager. So whatever that would mean. Now, the older he got, probably 12, he was probably 14. And I heard some buddies that was in his house. They were gaming videos and stuff. And I heard him talking and one of them was like dude, dude i'm telling you you got a freak ghost in this house yeah and she's like no there isn't there's no ghost and the other one's like yeah i swear to god i keep seeing something so i finally came around the corner and i said are you talking about the ghost and she's looking at me like he didn't want anybody to know oh he, don't feed it right well, he, he didn't want to scare off maybe some friends yeah so i said you guys saying something They're like some freaking girl she looks like a teenager so that seems to be whatever a teenager the profile yeah uh what if Okay, what if these ghosts that we think are ghosts are just people in another reality, and we're blending, we're bleeding into their reality, and they think we're ghosts? Right. right? We, yeah. Who knows? I mean, again. Just weird sciencey. I try my theories. best not to have an opinion. One hundred. I'm not gonna have an opinion. One hundred percent of anything. Cause, yeah. Because you know, we don't fucking know we yet. Don't know. God, that's crazy. And especially when you believe something, like I tell yeah. people all the time, like religions and stuff. It's like all religions are real. Yeah. So you're more pantheist. So well, uh, all, they're uh, real because yeah. people believe it. Yeah, yeah, one hundred. So it it is real. Like you, whatever. Are I, you a manifest person? Are you a, much into the concept of manifestation? Um. So I know you said you're more of a practical. You seem more practical, skeptical minded. I'm definitely more skeptical mm. minded, be, but I also maybe you just haven't opened the door to some some new juju. You know what I mean? Because if like so, I've done a lot of interesting meditative shit where i've been at different consciousness levels where i'm i was like christian baptist till i was about 18 19 years old and i thought everything was jesus and church and god and and i didn't have any beliefs outside of you know i was very right right brained right uh, and then but even though i told people i had a dream they all remember you're trying to telling. you're trying to think if you really experienced it or if your brain made it up or did i imagine just telling those people that i had a dream you know what i mean like that's where i get with the lost in the sauce brain <laughs> because again like the brain can do weird mm. shit it can like, well it creates like the just a thought mm -hmm. can create f actual chemical and physical responses in your body yeah you can believe something's happening even if it's not happening like people have literally died from heartbreak because they thought they're gonna die yeah. like people have literally thought themselves into death mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like wet dreams yeah that is your brain yeah. Thinking about sex. Yeah. While you're sleeping. Yeah. And you physically. Yeah. Get it out. You know what I'm saying? Those so are the biggest pain in the ass. Well, <laughs> I so hate those. To me, it's like, so what is the brain actually doing? So that's why, you know, anytime somebody's like, well, I think this and I believe that. And I'm like. Well, you? the brain seems to be a supercomputer of a projector and, a, and something that also receives information. Because we seem to project some. The more you get into it, like I totally understand being a skeptic. 100 percent because you don't know until you know right you know what i mean so of course not it doesn't make any sense this is all seems like bullshit and that's for me a lot of this seemed like it until i had experiences that were like this is too on the money this is like what the fuck else could this be you know um i had a guy that came on the podcast a month ago dustin um he he was he had open heart surgery uh done i think it was like 12 or 13 years ago and he died on the table and then still and but was still conscious so when you die right your brain is off right. there, there's no electricity this man was still somewhere he didn't go into blackness or temporary turn off his brain is not firing neurons yet he's conscious and he said he he could he could see in 360 degree angles he could see everywhere in the room and he went to this place where he talked he said he talked to jesus and all these things i'm not religious so that's not my thing but i totally respect that he went through that Right. But, uh, and then before he came back, whoever this guy that he was talking to, um, uh, said, we're going to bring you back. And then the second the guy said this zap, he's back in his body. Um, and then I believe right after that, he, I think he was in a coma for 12 days. Um, but there's weird shit about reality that like not entertaining the idea will actually help you in some ways stay more safe. Cause there's things right. out there you could, there's fucking weird dark shit out there you could get connected to if you focus too hard on it. Right. That's why witchy people are a little, can get a little off the deep end because only for me, I only say this shit because I've, I've, I've had experiences with shit where I'm like, okay, I'm not making this up. I'm seeing this in real life. This is, this is terrifying. 
I have I have no experience in this, you know. Um, but so there's a certain level of like where seeing is believing. If you don't believe in something, you won't see it. Right. Which is actually beneficial in but a lot the of ways. The brain also can play tricks on you. It can. But I think it's this and that, not right. this or that. Right, It Absolutely. could be both, you know what I mean? Where you can, you, supernatural experiences can 1,000% be real while simultaneously your brain makes shit up. Right. The whole, the whole rea realm of reality and consciousness is way more sandboxy than I think even I can understand. Well, there's no, yeah, and nobody can really, unless they can scientifically measure these things. Yeah. What do you think about AI? Have you done much research in the AI? Are you scared of this shit? I love it. I love it. Thank I love you. It. I, I'm the only like hopeful I person out here. I love it. It's going to change so many things for so many people. I'm sorry. We went started the technology issues uh, and we started, we, you know, a, however you want to believe, science backed or religious backed. Yeah. We're a human being. Yeah. And we're supposed to be evolving and doing things. Yeah. And who is to tell us when we're supposed to stop? Yeah, exactly. Stem cells. Mm-hmm. Cloning. Yeah. I'm down. Fuck. Yes. Well, and then we can start growing arms for people. I and, have. And... I repaired my whole neck with stem cell transplants. What? That's amazing. Yes. S repaired it. Your neck? What'd you do to your neck? I had a broken neck. Oh, my God. You broke your neck? Yeah, about 18 years ago. Oh, my yep. God. So I had bone on bone and then the cracks and all this stuff. and then. So you were temporarily the... paralyzed then? No, it didn't sever the spinal Whew. cord. Okay, yeah. yeah. No. So over the last how many years, it was bone on bone on bone. So I started to, all my cartilage was going away, which happens to a lot of people. You don't even have yeah. to have a neck hair injury. That can just be deterioration. Yeah. But it was so, it was the worst thing ever. Pain, I can't tell you. It was just yeah. horrible. And I don't do painkillers. I don't do drugs like yeah. that. So I suffered and I yeah. tried everything just there was. Went through her. Yeah. A lot of cupping, scraping, um, massage, acupuncture. Yeah. Eating right, doing all the stuff I'm sure. supposed to be doing. And so I knew what stem cells did. I've been investigating them myself. I yeah. don't know. It's science freaking fiction. They're yeah. growing ears. On lab rats and shit. They're growing people's ears on their own foreheads. Why? Oh, to keep the so the cells the same. Yes, they're growing noses on each on their own heads what? because of people that have lost things to, due to frostbite and stuff like that. So it's already there. They're regrowing. They regrow all this tissue. I love it. I, I love the concept of sci-fi happening in real wonderful. life. Wonderful. So they're regrowing tissue based on these little tiny stem stem cells and their little stem cells. So I already knew that someday. It was going to fix my neck because the only thing that I was ready for, I was at a stage four on uh -huh. deterioration of my neck. Stage so is that's four. like big severity? That's been done. Oh, wow. Been done. There's no fixing it. The yeah. only thing now is they go in surgically and they put a steel rod in there and they mobilize it. So I was going to be like this. Yeah. Now, probably take my pain level from an eight to a four. Yeah. It's not even going to fix it all the way. Yeah. I'm scared death surgeries. I've never, like, and you're going to be cutting near my spinal cord through my neck. Like, yeah, that's was, scary. I didn't want no part yeah. of that. So I found uh, my doctor, Becky. Mm -hmm. She'll be somebody you really want to talk to. Oh, if she'd be down oh, to oh, jump oh, on oh, here, oh. I would love to have a doctor on okay, here. Okay, found her, and I knew that she was doing stem cell transplants. Awesome. And when I tell you, it sounds like science, science fiction. Yeah. It was the easiest thing I've ever did in my life. They I, just like inject it in your yes, neck? with a needle. And I got up and left and went about my life. Do you remember and like the process fixed after? fixed my neck. It How fast? It. I would say um, the course of a, uh, 12 months. Yeah. The cartilage has re regrown back. Wow. I regrew back my own cartilage. So was it something that you could feel the differences in real time but or was it like the time had been such a full year that you didn't really consciously notice the difference until you're like wait my neck is good well i noticed the, well before she got the stem cells because you have to buy them yeah you got to order them and sadly in our country we're still a little third crazy. world with health fucking well, care with stem cells because yeah. there's a couple places you can harvest your own stem cells that's more expensive yeah and that takes a little hospital time or you can get stem cells from one of two other ways. The umbilical cord mm -hmm. of a live birth yep. donated by a mommy. Sure. Or medical waste, a.k.a. abortions. Yeah, fetuses. babies. Yeah. Other countries are going straight to the fetuses. Okay. 
we have to take it from the live birth because we're still scared of the word abortion in the city in this yeah. country. Okay. Yeah. So if you go to Canada, Canada, they bam, and you're half the time. Wow. It fixes you in half the time. Um, I got the live birth yeah. stem cells from the umbilical cord, and when I remember she handed it to me. Now back up. So sorry. Two weeks prior yeah, to getting that. She said, I'm going to use your own plasma, your PRP, plasma-rich platelets, and I'm going to relieve all the muscle spasms that you have in your neck. I had these things for 15 years. Seized up muscle oh, wow. spasms. Like, it was the worst pain. And she's like, okay, whatever. I said, yeah. So she So part of your neck break. Well, that was from the all the injury from being so bad. Yeah. That all the muscles, you know, were just spazzed up yeah. everywhere. Even I had a headache for 15 years. Oh, my God. I mean, I had a headache for 15 years. Morning, noon, and night. Wake up wow. in the middle of the night. Um, so she draws my blood, spins it. That's how simple plasma is. Yeah. Now this stuff is not even, we're not allowed to get this done in this country with insurance. Insurance doesn't want to cover this shit. They don't want to cover anything. They don't want to cover anything because they call it experimental. It's my blood. Yeah. So she spins it. She brings back the plasma, yellow. Mm-hmm. She puts it in a syringe and she literally, I'm just laying down and she's pushing everywhere, which is a lot, everywhere where all those muscles were spasming. Mm-hmm. And she's just injecting that plasma, beep, 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 just tiny little, about every inch, up into my head, yeah, the neck, everywhere. And it was hot. That's the only thing I can remember because uh. it's plasma. It's like, woo, like you can feel it instantly go in your skin. It's heated up, super conducted because it's yeah. wanting to be there. Like that's, yeah. it's human growth hormones. Yeah. So it's rushing plasma and human growth hormones to all these injury sites oh that's fascinating so she just bam 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 bam, and she goes okay just maybe take some ibuprofen or something now you might want some ice or i mean she probably pricked me 50 times if that needed. yeah so i get done put on my shirt go back out she goes two weeks we'll do your stem tra- stem cell transplant so boom see in two weeks i go out to the car and that was the first time i did not have a headache in 15 years wow. that's how fast it went that's how fast it happened. And I, my range of motion, because before it was like this, because I, I remember I put my car in reverse and yeah. I went, wait a minute, what? Like, I just started. Wait, like, this, when you walked out? Yes. You are already that, experiencing change that fast? That fast. What the fuck? Yes, that and that's fast. just from plasma? It's my own plasma. Yes. That's not even. Plasma rich. There's two, wow. there's, apparently there's two types of plasma. There's the liquidy liquid and then there's yeah. the thick stuff. Yeah. So when you first spin it, it's liquid. So if you pull the, some of that liquid off and then you keep re-spinning it, it turns into a thick gel. Yeah. They both work good, but the gel is definitely meaner. Yeah. Heavier duty. So that was the first time. And then she did the stem cell transplant. And again, it was just doot, doot, put those stem cells in between those two yeah. vertebrae. The only downtime I had was I couldn't run, jump, or whatever for about seven to ten days because yeah. those stem cells needed to stay exactly Stay in there. one spot and not move around. Right, because if they fell down, I could be growing giant spinal bones or something. Oh, God. Because wherever they stick is what they grow. Oh, so it's like the seed of the, of the bone yes, material. Okay. it's the seed. Uh, yeah. So, and these were called non-programmed stem cells. So they are literally whatever they stick to. So if they would stick to the cartilage, yeah. it would grow cartilage. If you stick it to bone, it would yeah. grow bone. If you went into the bone and went to bone marrow, it would grow bone marrow. If you put it in your eye, it would, yeah. be, or it would do the iris or the whatever. If you did it in the skin, wherever. Yeah. So they're it's not the duct tape of your, right. of your body. So you can get programmed ones, but again, those are ones you harvest yourself. So if like you need a bone marrow transplant. Oh, this blows my mind. Instead of getting somebody else's bone marrow, they're going to get you go in there and harvest your own bone marrow stem cells yeah and then reject them inject them back into your body and they're going to regrow wow. it's a, stem cells are everywhere except this country again we don't want to fix anybody we only want to treat their we symptoms. want we want products right we don't want healed people so that is mine and becky's now me and becky are pals now yeah. we become good friends yeah love her to death since she's fixed my neck mm-hmm. she has also reversed carpal tunnel what? With my own plasma. Again, I have all the videos. I just shoot videos for everything. Yeah. She hit this one, and she had to do two injections of two different ones in this one. Yeah. I, I literally. That's crazy. I, this pain and swelling in this was so bad. I couldn't even pick up something. Like, I, I had a. Oh, and if you're in hair, man. Yeah, I had like an ape hand. Like, I would, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, I had, you know, it was awful. Just more curved and bending. And it was awful. And then the pain was so bad, I couldn't put my hand flat on Was that brain. a fast fix as well? Yeah, I went and worked out that night. Started wow. grabbing weights. Wow, that's insane. Yes, yes. 
Now, again, this one was for pretty advanced compared yeah. to this one. This one had just started to hurt. Yeah. And that's when I thought, well, maybe I need one thumb. Can't have both of them hurt. Yeah. So she had to do two rounds in here. She did that, and two weeks later did another one. But yeah. this one, one shot, there's nothing. I feel nothing in there. Oh, She's done crazy. my knee. <laughs> she just did nuts. my knee. She did my tailbone. I yeah. Had, I had a tailbone. Uh, I probably, all of us did. Probably fell down skateboarding when we were kids. Yeah. You wait till you get older. You'll start finding out where all your injuries are. Uh, I already are. know where mine's so at. I had a tailbone it's my tailbone. Pain. Literally, I was like, oh, God, it kills me. So, anyway, it hurt. I couldn't have, I was having a hard time doing sit ups. So I was kind of like, mm. And so I told her, I said, my tailbone hurts. She goes, you probably have a blah, 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 blah. And I was like, mm. okay, fine. So she went, boop. I did 100 sit ups that night. Without any pain. That's fucking gangster as hell. And it costs very little, kind of, because... Somewhere in the middle. Again, like, insurance won't cover it. Yeah. So put it to you this way. What I got when she did my neck, it was yeah. three rounds of PRP mm -hmm. plus the stem cell transplant. I paid out of pocket 7500 bucks. For your fucking no neck to be saved. That's either. huge. I did not have a scar. They didn't cut me open. Oh. I didn't... I went right back to work. And yeah. I healed it actually, instead of just immobilizing it with metal pins. Yeah. What I what would it cost me to get a carpal tunnel done? I mean, because I'd be have to work six or twelve weeks, maybe. I don't even know how long. I need to talk to my grandma about stem cells. She's she's had some it's really crazy. bad spine and inflammation issues yeah. and knee problems, and yeah. they were about to fuse all majority of her vertebrae and her spine together, and. Yep. We've been. She reverses people's knee replacements, shoulder replacements by using. PRP Would you get time after the podcast if you wouldn't mind? Send me her information yes. so I can send that to my yes. mom and my grandma because I know my grandma actually literally could use. Yeah. This could be. Yep. Huge for her. Actually. Well, she's doing like, and what it what it costs is about five hundred bucks a whack. Yeah. But again, I know it sounds like not much for longevity of your life. You fixed me, dude. Yeah, that's that's humongous. <laughs> it's worth five hundred bucks. Because how yeah. the fuck were you going to fix now, yourself? Now the stem you know? cells obviously aren't five hundred because those like, again, yeah. like you got to buy those. Like nobody. Has yeah, stem yeah, cells yeah. That it's going to be more expensive. Walgreens. Yeah. <laughs> like they don't carry them there. So They're going to get them at all these. Yeah. yeah. Got to go get them. But um, but anyway, no. Like if you really like kind of dive into the stem cell transplant world, it's kind of hard to. It's not hard to find because you'll find all other countries are doing it and yeah. healing their humans. But if you think about it, like, I already know who's doing them. Like, mm -hmm. and they're going to Canada. Yeah. Just look at, did you remember Tiger Woods' car wreck? No, -uh, nope. You don't remember Tiger Woods having a car wreck? When was that? I don't know. But he broke like 20 something bones. Holy shit. Yeah, I don't know. You know. I don't know shit about went, golf. Right? No. Well, oh, he didn't go to America, right? How do you fix 27 bones and you're right back on the PGA circuit? What was that basketball player oh, whose shin nuts. snapped? Remember him? He just happened a few years ago. There's no, if you think I don't about pay it, like, about well, sports here's the thing. One bit. If you even think about it, like, no athletes are having career ending injuries oh, yeah. anymore. Yeah. They're taking off and getting those stem cell transplants. That makes sense. And they're not getting them here. Yeah. They're just going to Canada. Oh, yeah, because America's a corporation. And it's quicker, yeah. it's cheaper. Yeah, just pay for it's the plane, plane trip. And they're That's so fucked up. It is fucked up. That's it's so sad. fucked up. It's sad. It is. It's sad. Because that shows you really what we're battling here, and that's that's a yep. That's we we've, we've got government officials that could be making this better. That could enforce laws. That could open the gates for this kind of these therapies that exist. Yep. But they're standing on top of it. Well, they don't want it. No. They don't want to fix you because you're no longer a patient. They, well, they've probably got stock in pharma. And here's the thing, too. This Hollywood elite that everyone's wanting to scream about, like, yeah. drinking kids' blood and shit. <laughs> oh, my God. Give me a freaking blood. Oh, yeah. I know a couple. But there's a new thing. Um, they're like, oh, you know, the golden. There's a, I don't know. They're talking about something. The golden liquid. I don't know. Anyway, they're talking about, they're trying to come up saying that adrenochrome. Oh, oh you're talking about kid blood. Like, these Hollywood people are pumping themselves full of plasma. Yeah. That is how they're staying healthy. Yeah. And young looking. Yeah, and there's this, <laughs> there's this like <laughs> lotion. Be, I think a lot of Hollywood women will put on their face that comes from baby dicks. It, that, I don't believe it. That, for one second. Um, no, it was um, who who was the the actress that played Miss Congeniality? It's Sandra Bullock. I yeah. know, no, she, yeah. I don't believe that that's what she was talking about. I oh, really, I really think that they are. They have gotten into mm -hmm. the stem cells and the plasma yeah and again where are you going to get that stuff from if you yeah. get it in our country you have to get it from your own blood and live birth umbilical cords yeah if you go anywhere else it's literally coming from a fetus yeah from an abortion sure so of course that's where they're going 
Yeah, but yeah, you would, would assume you not that's just the... just fly up to Canada and get... So, but they're trying to... I feel like they're distorting it, like, for shock value. Like, oh, no, that's definitely, children's That's blood. definitely Hollywood. Right. Oh, I mean, and then, you know what? Even by doing a misinformation on that, you're keeping the stuff sacred so there's not as much of a knock for people to try to seek it. Right. If you think it's something else, right. you Keep know. Right, scandalous, too. Yeah. Because, I mean, also, like, even with mine, like, she... You know, one one time I showed up at her place and she's like, "Got any injuries?" I said, "Girl, I feel like a million dollars. Nothing hurts." Yeah. She goes, "Well, let's do your face." Drew the blood. She just starts shooting around in my face, mm -hmm. and it's building. And like, I mean, literally, the next several months to a year, even my clients are like, "What are you doing? You get a facelift?" I'm like, no, I got my freaking. You look blood. fucking younger than I do, I and I'm 35. My, I literally like, shoved <laughs> blood in my face. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like that's all it is. It's human growth hormones. Huh. So instead of Juvederm, which is artificial, or Botox, which is a freaking toxin, yeah, we were just putting our own blood back into our bodies. Through, it's so strange that our body doesn't know to just naturally do that. It does, but it takes longer. So like when you get an when you get a cut, yeah, that's why it calls. Oh, so we're jumping the process, right? So you get a cut, and it and the and the blood starts going to the cut, and it starts to scab. And, yeah. Okay. So that's a natural process. You yeah. get an injury, you break a bone, you get a bruise. The body is wanting to heal itself, but it's a lot longer. So if you just use your own blood plasma that's already in there. Mm concentrate it and shoot it right back into that injury site it's like super conducted super fast it's like microwave oh. versus oven yeah. yeah wow great analogy by the way but it also does Touché. everything like scar tissue she has been um experimenting with plasma on scar tissue like people that's had a cut and yeah had a surgery she's and then you hardly can see now before you'd have to go to a plastic surgeon i just been using coconut oil thinking thousands of dollars to fix those scars at a plastic surgeon office she's you it's eating it literally is eating scar tissue your own blood plasma wow there's so many cool things out there oh my god x-files fan i see take this go for it so yeah part two. it's it's fun because you're just hanging getting to know somebody cool yeah. <laughs> and talking some shit and hanging out and just doing some yeah, stuff I and kept it kept it on low key this it was good you, it was very g-rated yeah well well we, just, we got potty mouse with pg-13 a few little like get people to think and then wonder yeah maybe i'm talking about you maybe but I'm i mean hell i mean next time if you want you could bring another uh like yes. a co-worker or an employee and you could talk more about the industry and you guys new can kind of spit up old ones have the old yeah. dog and the new pup yeah that'd, that'd be cool or maybe I'll I'll bring somebody on. Who knows? Um, yeah, you got it. Like maybe a barber. Oh yeah. You get a barber. Yeah. Um, there's a couple of them that hate me. There's a bunch of really good ones in Marion. I know that. Um, but yeah, everybody, this is uh Lachelle. She uh she runs Hotheads in Marion, and uh, is it also Hotheads in McLeansboro? No, nope, it's still we kept it the same name, Natalie Josephs. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, Hotheads in Marion. We're open. Six days a week. We're only close on Sundays. Yeah. And we'll take, we love doing everybody's hair. Just don't be an asshole. Yeah. Give this woman some give us business. Some nice, well, we got good business already. Yeah. But just, yeah, we, we love the community. Nice people. We love nice and happy people. Yeah. Well, appreciate you, friend. Yes. Thanks for coming too. on. Yes. I'm going to end the stream and we'll do another one soon. Yes, we will.